What's going on guys, Quali Gaming, and today I'm going to be talking about the 5 things that Call of Duty Infinite Warfare Zombies did right. Now in today's video, I know a lot of people bash on this game, but today we're going to be, you know, defending it a little bit, because it, it did do some things right, and I think it, it outshined Treyarch in some uh, aspects, in some moments, but um, and actually a lot of my IW videos are more viewed than my Treyarch videos. Some, not all. I have a lot of zombie views on a bunch of videos. But, hope you guys enjoy the blame play. This is just me doing some of the Easter egg stubs. Uh, during, was I'm playing David Hasselhoff on Director's Cut for Spy Zombies in Spaceland. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so going into the number 5 spot is probably going to be some of the wonder weapons in this game. Um... Now, excluding the Mad and the Venom Y, Z, and X, um, this game's got some pretty good wonder weapons. I mean, the Katanas from Shaolin are probably the best melees ever. Um, the har Some of the Harpoon guns are pretty good, like the Acid Rain, the Whirlwind. But all of the laser guns from a Spaceland, like the Face Militar, the Discord, the meat grinder and I think I forgot what the last one's called the head cutter uh, those are really strong wonder weapons and they can last you a pretty long time especially if you double pap them and then they just become insanely good you'll see them later in this one I get the 4th of July and the uh, MC pop lock so they're I mean they're pretty good the only downside is there wasn't a lot of good wonder weapons like the mad wasn't that good uh, it did get buffed, so it's better, but it's still not that good in it, in its own sense. Um, a lot of the harpoon guns are really weak, and they just feel like some of them are just copies of the Treyarch bows. Um, and the pistols, the only reason I get them is just for the Easter egg. I don't really get them for anything else, because they take out the alien pretty fast. So yeah, um, Wonder Weapons coming in at number 5, not too bad, and, but not too good at the same time. Alright, coming in at number 4, it's going to be some of the boss or dog rounds, kind of. like. So what I mean by the dog rounds, like, you know, the dog rounds get the max ammo as well. You know, some of the new ones in this game are pretty unique, like the clowns, the sasquatches, the crogs. Skater zombies, and I think Beast from Beyond. It's between the ninjas, clowns, and cryptids, which is the worst one by far. That's why this one was held back so so far, because some of them are really annoying. If you don't have Jug for some of them, they will take you down pretty quick. Like the Sasquatches, I think it's like a two-hit kill, because they red screen you on your first hit, and then if they hit you one more time, you're dead. Um. The clowns aren't too bad, you just gotta keep your distance and get a gun that can get some good damage in the early rounds. The skaters are pretty easy too. They kinda do the same thing as the clowns, they just they skate instead. But the The Krogs, they're pretty easy too. If you just if, actually if you just shoot them in the back, they'll die instantly, no matter what, on whatever round that is. So the cards are pretty easy to deal with, but I'm also talking about the special zombies and the boss zombies, like the boss fight. Um, most of those guys are pretty difficult, uh, but it's a good kind of difficult. Like the brute is like he's kind of the only thing that's annoying about the brute is probably the laser eyes. Everything else is all right. I've never really got killed by the ground pound, just the laser eyes. Um, the slasher is the most annoying though. I'll, that's another reason the spot was held back pretty far. It's because the slasher is really annoying. And so is the crog brew. And the ninjas, oh my god. The ninjas are the worst. Um, those are like, they're not even ninjas man. They're just ninja assassins. Like they're on a whole new level. But the cryptids, the cryptids are just annoying. So those aren't that good. And some of the boss zombies are alright. Like, two of them you don't really damage. Well, the sl so the, the alien, or the alien, people, some people call him the alien. 
he's pretty good. He's pretty balanced. You know, it's just simple boss fight, shoot him. Um, the super slasher, you only shoot him towards the ends of like each half. So there's three halves to the boss fight. You only shoot him three times. And uh, the rat king, you shoot a bunch of times. The Crogzilla, you don't shoot at all. And the last one is pretty much all just shooting beasts from beyond the crypto boss light. So yeah, the special enemies, this is what I should have called it. The special enemies come in at number four. Now let's get on to the number three spot. Now coming in at number three, we're going to have the weapon selection. Uh, the weapon selection in this game is actually pretty strong. Uh, the starting pistol being the best gun in the whole game. Uh, when it's pack a punch and double pack a punch, thing is a monster. Um, it reminds me of the old Mustang and Sally's because you can actually get bomb stoppers, which is PhD for this game. So that's really cool. Something Treyarch should have done. I uh, brought back PhD, but we, we'll get into that another day. Um, I like the Mauler. The FHR 40 is probably a, I think a better version of the Mauler if you want more fire, firepower. Like I use that. Instead of the Mauler for the uh, boss battle for Shaolin Shuffle. Um, also, the VPR is pretty good. You can get it as a wall buy on Beast, which is always cool, always amazing. Uh, what else? You got the Reaver Shotgun Type 2 if you get the, but the Butcher. The NV4, that's like my go to wall weapon. Uh, some of the weak ones, probably the E-Rad, the M1, it's alright, unless you have scope dollars, then it's not too bad. Uh, the Volk, I don't even use the Volk. I used it like a few times when the game first came out, and I was like, eh, this gun kind of sucks. But, most of the weapon selection is pretty good. The wall weapon selection is kind of weak, so this one isn't as high. But the box weapon selection is pretty good, and I like how they took some of the guns they added later in the game and put those on the wall like the G rail, the O wing, the Oni, the uh, that one laser rifle, I forgot what it's called, the McTavish, put that on the wall, uh, and the VPR, you know, just a bunch of guns, they switched it up kind of, and then they get the ones that people liked, which is really good, I really like that, and this is why this comes in at number three. Would have been a little bit higher, a little bit stronger wall weapons. But without further ado, let's get on to the number two spot. Alright, so number one and number two are actually pretty close. But I think because how good number one is and kind of how number two didn't really hold up the standards the whole time and didn't stay that way all the time is why it got this spot so coming in at number two is the vibe and the theme of the maps um, I really like Spaceland's theme the goofy wacky 80s theme park like it's an 80s space theme park a lot of people like the 80s um, it's, it's a good time you know it was a pretty good time probably to be alive I, mom and dad you know and it's like I said, like it's a relatable too. Like probably if your parents come in here and they see, like they they hear the music, they'll be like, oh, you probably used to, you know used to listen to that as a kid, you know. And they can make a personal connection to it. Um, but the rest of the maps really aren't the best. I mean, the horror theme for Raid in the Redwoods it kind of worked. It was all right. I love the 70s theme for Shaolin Shuffle. I'm like 70s is like my my theme. I love it. Um, the 50s for uh, Attack of the Radioactive thing really didn't work for me. It was all right. Like it was a good map and it fit with the Easter egg and all that stuff. But like the vibe of it, I didn't know any of the songs. Like like I kind of knew some of the songs from the the Disco Inferno. And the rave area, like, I knew some of them. I, I kind of listen to that stuff sometimes. So I knew them. I don't really know 50s music. You know, I don't know anyone that listens to 50s music anymore. But, anyway, that is the number two spot. Oh, and Beast from Beyond, my bad. 
future. There was no music. It was it was awful. It was awful. And yeah, so coming this is coming in at the number two spot. Let's get on to the number one spot. Oh, I forgot real quick. Um, I'm gonna throw in a few honorable mentions. So a few honorable mentions would probably be um the guest stars. Uh, the buildables, the buildables are really good in this game, and mm, some of the melee weapons besides besides the wonder weapon ones from Shaolin Shuffle and like the chi abilities and all that. You could put the chi abilities in there because they were pretty cool. I liked it. I like the chi. I like the cleaver, the crowbar, the axe. Like all that stuff was cool and it was fun. It was fun to use. So just trying to get the golden axe. That was always that was always fun to have. But anyway, those are the few honorable mentions, so let's get into the number one spot. Alright, so taking the number one spot, no doubt, no chance with any of the other spots without a shadow of doubt in my mind, it has got to be the Easter eggs and Director's Cut. Okay, so the Easter eggs in this game are actually really good. Um, besides Raze, Raze was kind of disappointing because it was more or less like, Spacelands, but Director's Cut was like completing all the Easter eggs and putting in those film reels, getting Director's Cut. It was amazing. And basically, if you don't know what Director's Cut is, what I've been playing with this whole time, you get 25 of uh, 25,000 points to start off with, all perks, and you know you just open doors, you know do all this other stuff, and you could actually get the Easter eggs done again, and you get these things called talismans and you collect them all, do the beast easter egg, you get to fight the, the devil, Mephistopheles, which is really cool. And if you beat him, you can go back to Spaceland and play as Willer Wyler to get the all-end ending. It's like, oh, to be continued, you know, there's probably going to be a sequel, hopefully. There's a sequel. But, the, like, the easter eggs, they didn't really get challenging until um, Shaolin Shuffle... But the first two maps were kind of the introductory maps. Like, here, like I think Rave should have went before Spaceland. It would have made more sense. Because it would have been, we're going back in time instead of back in time, forward, back, back, and then forward. It would have been much different, you know. Start in the 90s, go to the 80s, 70s, 50s, chronologically, but then skip to the future. It'd be kind of cool I guess but bigger scampy choosers and um, I think this is a great like I think all the Easter eggs in this are great director's cut is awesome but my well, one complaint is that you should be able to play as Willer Wyler on all the maps and do all the Easter eggs the only thing you shouldn't be able to do is fight Mephistopheles of course that wouldn't make too much sense because he's already been defeated but they should have made it where you had to go through all the Easter eggs again, including Beast, with Willer Wyler, and then you get like a better ending than what they gave us. Or maybe the same. It doesn't really matter to me, honestly. It's still a good ending. But yeah, that is all of the spots. I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. Uh, it took a little bit of time to make this, you know. So if a like would be appreciated. Subscribe, you know, that'd be awesome. And. Don't forget uh, to check out the next video, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.